Well, I was first diagnosed with cancer in the left kidney in February 2019. I was 89 then. And uh, I made out a list of what everything that I did in order to uh, try and stop it. And uh, I gave this list to my oncologist and he said, oh, that wouldn't help. <laughs> he wanted to try radiation and chemotherapy and all the rest of it. So I made a list of uh, 12 things that I did and gave it to him, but he said it wouldn't help. Anyway, the first one is fasting. And I did an initial eight day fast and occasional small ones after that. The reason I fast is because cancer cells rely on the glucose. And um, if you can cut out the glucose, well, it starts to starve off the uh, cancer cells. The second thing I used was uh, uh, liposomal vitamin C, which is just really vitamin C in form to uh, last a bit longer in the body and give it straight to the cells, which is an easier way of taking it because uh, otherwise, um, you've got a limited absorption from your gut of um, about five grams at a time. Anyway, I use liposomal vitamin C roughly every day, uh, which gives me about a 20 to 40 gram blood level and about a quarter of a teaspoon or so, which is two or three grams with meals and drinks of sodium ascorbic. So, so the whole idea is to try and copy the animals. All the plants and animals make vitamin C by the ton, except we, we don't because we suffer from a genetic uh, liver deficiency disease, enzyme deficiency disease called uh, ascorbemia. So I try to copy the animals because having been an animal vet to begin with, with my professional life, I knew that. And then I started on the trace elements like um, uh, iodine and selenium work together. So I gave myself a uh, trace element of about 400 uh, milli micrograms of selenium a day and also one or two drops of uh, Lugol's iodine a day because they both work together. The iodine in the thyroid works with the selenium. And then uh, the fifth thing I, worked, what was, I used it was a broad spectrum vitamin mineral trace element, uh, herbal, and the only one which was used unofficially by World Health. And, uh, I found it sort of helped, so I became a, a real distributor of it because uh, I found I thought that worked the best. The next one I used was kefir. It's a probiotic, um, a bit like uh, yogurt, you know, a, a probiotic ancient culture to re recolonize the gut and it eliminates the lucky leaky gut syndrome and uh, boosts the immunity. It gives about 50 bugs to the um, gut, whereas ordinary yogurt only gives about four, uh, four or five. And if you've got a, a much better balanced lots of guts, it actually connects with the brain and the um, messages come up from the gut to the brain and, and back again saying we're short of this vitamin or that vitamin, try and make a bit more of that. So there's, it's worthwhile trying to get your gut to work to the, the fullest possible ability. So I use the kef the kef of that ancient culture. Um, then I tried to keep to a, a diet, this is number seven, a diet of raw eggs and fruit, raw veggies, fruit and eggs from my own garden. I've got a little farm here of about nine acres. And um, I would av av avoid um, any, um, any carbohydrates or uh, sugars or processed foods. Um, the only thing I'd cook mainly was uh, homegrown potatoes didn't like eating that raw. And uh, I, I also have a little uh, bread making machine. I used an old Russian recipe I got from Lockie in, uh, in Adelaide, I think it was. Uh, so I made my own multi-grain Russian brown bread, sort of multi-grain brown bread, and occasional fresh fish. I tried to avoid meat because Meat produces more, uh, slows your gut down, and after all, I'm pretty old, and I don't want to slow it down too much. It'd be slowing down enough with old age, and um, I use a, so a bit of fish. So I try to avoid meat because it slows the gut down, and also it produces more of an acid environment. You want to have a try of more of an alkaline diet um, in, in, in the body. Uh, that's number seven. 
Um, of course, there were occasional social lapses of uh, perfect <laughs> diet. <laughs> Our visitors come and uh, they love a drop. Some of them love a drop of whiskey, stuff like that. <laughs> Became, a, a, as I said, social lapses. So, um, the eighth thing I did was to try and exercise. I've always been a, a, an exercise fanatic. I was a, I was a runner and then a triathlete, etc. And so, on. and then I got, I gave up my last. Tracking when I was 75, I think, and uh, due to an accident with a car knocking me off my bike, so, uh, but I still swim and compete in that. So I have every second day I try and swim as much as I can, about a kilometre. And number nine was to try and have a steam sauna every after every swim for about half an hour if possible to get the chlorine out of my skin because chlorine. Can, uh, will, 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 will knock out the iodine. And it's most important you have your, enough iodine for the for your for your immune system and for to work the thyroid and, and all the hormones properly. So I always tried to have a steam sauna after. Uh, that was number nine, and number ten was put, try and put in half an hour to an hour of meditation or and or a bit of prayer, um, or fall asleep for an hour an hour daily. Uh, but now we come to the most important thing of the lot, which I think f is for cancer, and that was uh, Dr. Budwig's protocol. But J Dr. Budwig was a, a, a German lady uh, research scientist who studied medicine, and because she treated people at the same time, then, uh, it was politically incorrect then, way back 50 years ago, to, uh, to, to, to not stick to the recommended drugs and things uh, for cancer and her she said that the fats well she actually researched fats first and she um, diagnosed uh, the, the construction of the of, of, the, of, the, of the essential amino acids which are omega-3 and omega-6 the body can make any fat at once except omega-3 and omega-6 and nobody knew about these fats, and she diagnosed uh, chemically with the construction of the molecules, etc. And uh, as a result, um, she she was put up for an, a Nobel Prize. So, Dr. Budwig worked out that a mixture of flaxseed oil, which is the richest source of omega three, it's sixty percent. The fresh flaxseed, it's got to be fresh, it oxidizes quickly. So if you're going to use it, you've got to keep it in the fridge and keep away from, from heat and light. And if you use that in, in a, a mechanical um, mix, proper mix of the flaxseed oil with low fat cottage cheese. Now, low fat cottage cheese is mainly, mainly the sulfur proteins. And it's this combination of the sulfur proteins with the omega-3 that produce the equivalent that the body uses for the proper membranes of every cell. Now, she, she was saying that the margarine and all these fats were bad and they were blocking the membrane of every cell. And if the membrane gets blocked, the goodies can't get in and the baddies can't come out and therefore you get cancer. And she set up um, a, a cancer clinic and she, um, at that, that time, and this was 50 or 60 years ago, uh, at that time, um, the medical profession and all the fats industry especially came down on her like a ton of bricks. But she started her own cancer, cancer clinic and mainly uh, when you went to her cancer clinic you had a, a raw diet of vegetables or, or, or um, fruit and she made up this cream of, of the flaxseed oil and the sulfur proteins. It became like a mayonnaise and to the veggies she, she put garlic in it, that was the mayonnaise for the veggies, and for the fruit she could put honey into it and make up a mayonnaise for that. So it became quite a pleasant diet. Uh, so that was your diet when you went to her clinic. And she had uh, 3,000 cases, and the professor next door said, do you mind if I follow up all your cases? She said, no. And he he found that out of the 3,000 cases that he followed up, she got 90% cure. A 90% cure. And of course, all the medical profession and especially the, the, the big firms with all the big money, like Unilever, etc., they all came down at a ton of bricks and, and, and they, 
put, she was put up for the for the Nobel Prize seven times, but he came down and said to the Nobel Prize people, you know, we're not going to help you in any way with the money, and we'll do everything we can to stop her because she's going to kill our industry. So um, that's why she never seven times she was proposed for a Nobel Prize, and seven times it was refused from the Nobel Prize people because of the big money, and big money is the first thing that they comes first in this world, unfortunately. So, another thing that she put, pointed out was sunbathing was necessary because the proton, protons of, of the sun, of the sun, these little tiny proteins of energy, each one has um, an aura, a little um, frequency round about it. Each little, each little bit of energy has a tiny little frequency and that frequency she found out was exactly the same as the frequency of the electrons in the in the curves of omega-3 uh, oil it matched it so if they match up and this is what actually happens in the in the leaves of plants the same sort of thing happens to produce energy you are we're getting into quantum physics now it's a bit complicated so We'll just say that the sunlight photons come into your body, and if you, if that uh, omega three um, af, uh, an essential acid is there, it matches up with the frequency of the electrons in the in the omega three, and this gives you what's called a pi electron. Mm -hmm. We're into quantum physics, like I said, and it gets very complicated, but it gives you that tiny bit of extra energy for the brain too. Maybe that's the difference between our brains and animal brains, because they reckon that animal, animals can't absorb these, this, these photons as well and match it up. So we, that, that's the theory, and apparently the latest quantum physics boys have said, yes, she was right. So I took, every day, I, took, I followed Dr. Budwig's thing of this cream on top of my food and tried to follow her as much as possible. And I found that, uh, uh, what was it, said, there was no growth or metastasis after one year in the cancer of my kidney. And the, 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 um, my, my oncologist said, oh, well, that's, uh, that's um, you couldn't have, been a, couldn't have been a carcinoma, couldn't have been. And he had no explanation of why my thing would work. He didn't think my... They should have had radiation or something like that. Uh, but if I got radiation or, or chemical rumour, what, what would damage would be done to the cells round about and to my immune system and my body? No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So anyway, after one year, it was static, stopped, it stopped growing. And uh, uh, once it showed, and the year after, March 221, that was uh, about six months ago, there was one third shrinkage. So I think I've won the battle. Yeah, so now I'd like to show you just how we could probably make uh, uh, this Budwig cream. Right, I'm, ju I'm just mixing up um, three tablespoons of low-fat cottage cheese. It's actually less than 2% uh, man put out by this firm here. But then any any low-fat cottage cheese, less than 2%, will be effective. So, put that, I've got three tablespoons, and it should be in the ratio of at least two parts of the cottage cheese to one part of the oil. So, I've probably got a bit more, with, because it's a heap tablespoonful of low-fat low cottage cheese. So now, I'm going to uh, add three tablespoonfuls of fresh flaxseed oil. That's the, uh, that's about the best one on the market. It's um, organic, organic brown flaxseed oil. Don't buy it if it's in a, it, it oxidizes with light and heat, so don't buy it if it's in a glass bottle, even if it's colored, because the light can get in, and it's got to be kept in the fridge. So when I've used this, I'll put it straight back in the fridge. So there's, one tablespoonful of oil and two tablespoonfuls of oil and three tablespoonfuls of oil. Put the lid on 
and put it back in the fridge and now we have to mix them together so that the two molecules become one molecule and the, that one molecule because it's a lipoprotein will be absorbed very quickly by the digestive system and go, go into the blood and straight to the cells to become part of the membranes of every cell, including the cancer cells. So, got to get them properly mixed up, because Dr. Bidley reckons that um, only a, a machine will bring them really close together. But So we've got to make the oil disappear completely out of this low-fat co cottage cheese. <laughs> Now it's disappearing. There it is, it's disappeared completely. No drop of oil there. It's all thoroughly mixed with the sulfur proteins of the low fat cottage cheese. Now, what I'll do now, this is going to be my uh, brunch actually, breakfast and lunch, I've been swimming all morning, and uh, definitely no signs of oil, no. I, I, what I'll do now, before I take this, I'll add some kefir, which I've talked about before, which uh, gives you a better um, mixture of uh, microbes for your gut. And this is the kefir. And it makes it more dilute, which makes it easier to, because uh, it's pretty stiff as a made at first. So this fluid will help to mix it. I'll put a bit of honey in too, because being like yogurt, it's a bit sour. So I've got some, some organic honey from a friend, and I'll add that. And actually, this, this honey has got um, about 50% of the Australian type of Manuka honey, which is about, uh, he, he reckons it's about nearly as good as the um, New Zealand one. So, so, so. Being an old friend, he gave me his, uh, luckily, he gave me uh, this uh, sp special organic honey with the Manuka thing. So I'm very lucky. Beautiful. Now, I will have to mix this with kefir and the honey and mix it in with my chocolate food mix. So I'll get all the kefir and all my uh, the honey, which is digested differently from the sugar. Honey is, is a healthy sugar. So I mix it all together and it makes it much more pleasant to eat from the sourness of the, the uh, pepper. So that's it all mixed up. And all I do is lick, lick this and make sure I don't waste any of this very valuable mixture. Excuse my uh, manners. And uh, Put this under the top, wash it out, and that's and 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 now this is my uh, breakfast and lunch. Uh, I usually have a bit of fruit with it. Um, I've usually got an apple or something from my garden chopped up, ready to take with it. So this is the most important part for getting your cancer fixed. Okay.